Ray underscore S New Jedi Order movie faces a massive challenge after the Acolyte. Ray Skywalker's New Jedi Order movie will have quite the challenge following the release of the Acolyte series. Set 100 years before the events of the Skywalker saga, the upcoming Star Wars show will feature several New Jedi characters, each with their own signature lightsaber. However, one lightsaber in particular should make quite the impact on the entire Star Wars franchise overall. As featured in new trailers and promos for the Acolyte from showrunner Leslie Headland, the new show will feature a group of Jedi investigating a string of recent murders of their fellow members of the Jedi Order during the High Republic era. This includes Jedi Master Vernus Karuo, Rebecca Henderson, and her incredibly unique lightsaber, following a classic Star Wars trend whenever new trilogies and eras are introduced to the galaxy, far away. To that end, seeing how Rey's new Jedi Order movie might rise to the challenge should be very exciting. What's the best way to watch Star Wars? Here's everything you need to know to watch in release or timeline order, and how to include the TV shows. As seen throughout the entire Star Wars franchise, every new trilogy and era brings new lightsaber designs and features. The prequel trilogy is most notable for Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace and the ignition of his double blade lightsaber, while Count Dooku debuted in Attack of the Clones with his uniquely curved hilt inspired by the sword of Charlemagne. Likewise, the very first trailer for The Force Awakens saw Kylo Ren igniting his volatile crossguard lightsaber at the dawn of the sequel trilogy. Additionally, shows like The Clone Wars introduced new lightsabers such as double blade lightsabers with hinges, as well as the legendary Darksaber which eventually debuted in live action with The Mandalorian. Ezra Bridger's first lightsaber in Rebels had a prototype blaster feature, and the animated series also debuted the rotating double-blade lightsabers of the Imperial Inquisitors. Most recently, the New High Republic era set hundreds of years before the Skywalker saga has introduced ornate and unique lightsabers in both canonical novels and comics. This includes Vernus Ruo's purple lightsaber which is set to make its own live-action debut in The Acolyte. Briefly seen in one of The Acolyte's recent promos, the show's live-action Vernistra is seen igniting and flourishing her incredibly unique purple lightsaber and its alternate light whip mode. The design having come to her in the middle of the night, Ruo built her light whip as a young Jedi, a prodigy among her fellow members of the Jedi Order and one of the youngest to have been granted the rank of Jedi Knight at the age of 15. Now a Jedi Master, the Acolyte will feature an older Vernistra and her light whip, the first to ever debut in a live-action Star Wars project. Requiring intense training so as not to lose a limb, the light whip is a rarely seen weapon among the Jedi Order due to its volatility. However, an adept Jedi like Vernistra can eventually learn how to account for the whip's tendrils and become quite a formidable defender of peace and justice. Having originated in 1985 with Star Wars Legends continuity, seeing a canonical light whip in live action is undoubtedly one of the Acolyte's most anticipated moments ahead of its premiere. Although each trilogy and era in the Star Wars canon has come with its own new lightsabers and unique designs, Vernistra's light whip in the Acolyte certainly breaks the mold to a higher and very exciting degree. Keeping that in mind, it's possible that this could open up new opportunities for future Star Wars projects to break the mold even further. One could imagine that Rey's new Jedi Order would be a great project to debut a new kind of unique lightsaber. That said, it's hard to think about what kind of alternate lightsaber design could beat the Acolyte's upcoming light whip. The Acolyte is set to premiere June 4th on Disney+. Plus. The Acolyte is a television series set in the Star Wars universe at the end of the High Republic era, where both the Jedi and the Galactic Empire were at the height of their influence. This sci-fi thriller sees a former Padawan reunite with her former Jedi Master as they investigate several crimes, all leading to darkness erupting from beneath the surface and preparing to bring about the end of the High Republic. We want to hear from you. Share your opinions in the thread below and remember to keep it respectful. This thread is open for discussion. Be the first to post your thoughts. The Star Wars original trilogy consists of three of the best movies ever made, but only ten of its scenes can be considered the best of the trilogy. Christina Lauren's new romance book features a compelling love story, 
but one element of the paradise problem is even stronger than the relationship. One theory from Doctor Who Season 14, Episode 3, Boom, points to the fact that Gudi Godway's 15th Doctor might have told a major lie. Both Yellowstone and the upcoming Epic Horizon, an American saga star Kevin Costner in a leading role, but the similarities don't end there. Plot specifics are still slim for the upcoming Captain America, Brave New World, but a new update implies a return to the MCU's earlier stories. Netflix's latest dark comedy K-drama The Eight Show may have drawn to a thrilling close, yet its finale questions the survival show's real purpose. Flash Gordon has made his epic return to comics courtesy of Mad Cave Studios, and he has brought with him his answer to the Death Star.